Good evening. It's my pleasure and honor to be part of this course. And I would like to thank Dr. Potker and Dr. Verma for inviting me to talk about characterization of renal masses with MRI. Unfortunately, incidence of renal cancer has increased by 30 to 40 percent over the last 30 years or so. And this is predominantly due to incidental lesions due to increased imaging with ultrasound and CT scan. Although most of these lesions are less than four centimeter, increase in diagnosis has not resulted in better clinical outcome. In fact, they reported increased mortality from 1.5 to 6.5 deaths per 100,000. And this is predominantly due to overdiagnosis and surgeries and aggressive management, even slow growing tumors, which may or may not show growth over the time. As we know, ultrasound is very cost effective. It is very diagnostic for simple cysts. However, it has its limitations with smaller lesions, patients' body habitus, characterizing complex cystic masses, differentiating from complex cystic masses to solid lesions, and cannot stage the disease. CT scan is very sensitive and specific for renal masses greater than two centimeter in diameter. However, it does have its own limitations in complex cysts, cyst containing hemorrhage of protein, lesion size, intraparenchymal lesions that cannot be measured accurately as far as Hounsfeld density is concerned because of volume averaging and misregistration artifacts. It can be limited with renal function. So that's where MR comes in. MR has got excellent soft tissue contrast due to which we can use multiple sequences and parameters to characterize the renal lesions. We do not need iodinated contrast. So uh, some of the patients who have allergies can be still scanned with this. In cases of renal insufficiency, now with uh, newer microcyclic uh, agents, we can uh, give IV contrast even in end stage renal failures. First of all, technique. Technique is very important. Uh, our MR protocol is same for all abdomens. It has uh, corona T2, actual T2 fat set, uh, gradient take in and out of phase imaging, DWI and coronal and axial Dixon. Post contrast, we typically do all these sequences in, uh, in arterial, venous, three minute delay, five minute delay in coronal, and for all, we do subtractions as well. The money sequences that can really make difference uh, in diagnosing renal as well as liver lesions is subtraction in and out of phase and fat site. Remember that for renal tumors, fat is your friend and diffusion weighted images. As far as subtraction technique is concerned, it is grossly underutilized. It drives me crazy when I see uh, outside scans where subtractions is not done. This is very simple. You just have to push a button and machine does it for you. There is no extra table time or patient time. I think it's crime not to do subtraction sequences when it is so easily available and it makes a lot of difference in characterizing these lesions. So essentially in this, you are subtracting pre-contrast images from post-contrast images. So it will subtract out the hemorrhage, hyperintensity within the lesion, and it will just give you pure enhancement within the lesion, which helps you a lot. So for example, in this patient, this is a, a lesion with slightly hyperdensity. There's peripheral calcification following intravenous IV contrast. There is no way of measuring how much this lesion is enhancing. Same thing with MRI. You can see on T2-weighted images, it is slightly, it is hypo-intense. So on pre-contrast even, it is markedly hyper-intense, indicating hemorrhage or proteinaceous material with IV contrast. You cannot uh, exactly determine whether this is contrast or the uh, hemorrhage within the lesion. But when you do subtraction, you can see this ugly nodule within this cyst, which was a papillary uh, renal cell carcinoma, uh, which would have been difficult to diagnose either on the CT images uh, or non-subtracted images. So subtraction technique is very important. Another lesion here on CT scan without contrast, arterial phase, portal venous phase or nephrographic or ne corticomedullia nephrographic phase. We don't know what is whether this lesion is enhancing or not, but on MRI, you can see that on T2-weighted images, there is some heterogeneity within the lesion. 
on pre-contrast images, there is uh, area of uh, hemorrhage, but with IV contrast, we don't know how much of it is enhancing. On subtraction, you can clearly see that it has got low level enhancement. This was another papillary renal cell carcinoma. This was a 50 year old patient, shows an ugly looking bile ablated uh, lesion with hyperintensity on uh, T1 pre-contrast weighted images. Even on T2 weighted images, the lesion looks extremely ugly, but with IV contrast, you don't know whether this lesion is enhancing or not, but on subtraction images, you can clearly see that this is just a hemorrhagic lesion. There is no abnormal enhancement within it. We followed this lesion for three years, and you can see that there is hardly change in this uh, lesion. There's still some hemorrhage. It is still looking ugly, but there is no uh, enhancement on uh, subtraction images, which saved nephrectomy for this patient. This was a high-grade papillary renal cell carcinoma. You can see that this lesion has got extensive hemorrhage within the lesion. This area, we don't know what is happening with IV contrast without subtraction. We don't know whether this area is enhancing or not. And on subtraction images, you can see really ugly looking uh, papillary renal cell carcinoma, which can be easily diagnosed once we subtract that hemorrhage. So subtraction, very important uh, for diagnosing tumors. How about in and out of phase imaging? This is especially diagnostic for uh, angiomyolipomas and some of the clear cell renal cell carcinomas. Let's see uh, how we can diagnose those. Uh, rin uh, angiomyolipomas come in different flavors. They can be very fatty, like this, where you, can, you are going to get um, this India ink artifact at the fat water interface. And this is diagnostic of uh, angiomyolipoma. You can also see that uh, there is fat here, which is going to suppress on fat site images. Uh, another lesion, intraparenchymal angiomyolipoma, is going to show that India ink artifact all around it, as well as chemical shift artifact. Uh, some of the lesions could be tiny, uh, which will completely show dropout on out of phase imaging. If there are lesions containing less fat, then that portion of the lesion is going to show a drop on out-of-phase imaging. However, the problem comes when there is a lipid-poor AML or clear cell carcinomas on like in and out-of-phase imaging. However, it has been shown that um, the lipid-poor angiomyolipomas tend to follow signal of psoas muscle on uh, in phase and they will show areas of drop in signal on out of phase depending on how much uh, fat content is within the lesion whereas in renal cell carcinoma they usually follow the uh, parenchymal intensity on in phase and on out of phase due to intracytoplasmic fat that is microscopic fat is going to show uniform drop in signal uh, which is very characteristic of uh, clear cell renal cell carcinoma. This is a clear cell renal cell carcinoma in phase, out of phase. Although this tumor looks slightly heterogeneous, you can see that on out of phase imaging, there is uniform drop in signal, and that's because of intracytoplasmic flat uh, seen in this lesion which is very typical. In lipid poor angiomyolipoma, again, we can see that uh, it follows the signal of psoas on in phase, on out of phase, there are areas of uh, drop in signal within it due to fatty tissue within the lesion, but it really depends on how much fat is within the lesion. Uh, this is lipid rich uh, angiomyolipoma, which follows the signal of surrounding uh, fat you can see it is getting saturated on fat set uh, sequences and out of phase imaging, it shows areas of drop in signal typical for lipid rich angiomyolipoma. How about diffusion and ADC sequences? This is especially helpful in differentiating cystic benign lesions from cystic renal cell cancers, can differentiate benign from malignant renal tumors may be helpful in differentiating histologic subtype or grading the severity of the uh, tumor. DWI is also useful in patients if you cannot give gadolinium, and that might be the, your only chance to grade the tumor. So here is a, um, a low-grade oncocytoma, which shows hardly any restriction, whereas this is a clear cell renal cell carcinoma. You can see how much restriction is there and uh, low ADC. So very helpful. 
So let's go through a couple of scenarios to run through different types of tumors and where MR is going to be helpful in diagnosing this lesion. So scenario one, MR can be helpful to further characterize lesion where initial CT protocol was not adequate. So this patient had a CT scan without contrast and you can see that this patient has got multiple renal lesions except one, probably rest of the lesions are not characterized on this uh, non-contrast CT scan. You can go ahead and do a CT protocol with the arterial venous phase. However, still there are going to be some lesions which are not going to be characterized as you can see on this MRI that all these lesions look cystic. Some of this lesion, for example, this one is hemorrhagic lesion. There's small hemorrhagic lesion here, which would have been a problem with the CT scan with and without contrast. But on MRI, we can show that all these lesions are benign and this patient does not need a follow up or any other study. This patient had CTA examination, which showed an indeterminate lesion here. We went ahead and did uh, MRI in this patient, and we can see there's this lesion, which was not characterized on with contrast, is in fact an angiomyolipoma. We detected another angiomyolipoma here. These two lesions showed gross fat within it, so there was no additional examination necessary in this patient. Summarizing scenario one, MR can be helpful to further characterize lesions where the initial CT scan protocol was not adequate. So let's see whether MRI ca ca can be helpful in indeterminate uh, lesion despite of adequate CT protocol. So here the protocol is uh, adequate, uh, but still the lesions could be non-diagnostic because in homogeneous lesion, if there is intermediate change in density, that is, increase in density less than 20 Hounsfield unit, but more than 10 Hounsfield unit, then those lesions are going to be indeterminate. Whereas if it is a heterogeneous lesion, then it's going to be difficult to exclude smaller nodular areas within the lesion. So this is a renal mass or renal lesion here. You cannot see it on pre-contrast, but there was a 90 Hounsfield unit increase in density. Uh, from pre-contrast to post-contrast, which is non-diagnostic. So this is indeterminate lesion. We are also have to remember that smaller cysts, which are intraparenchymal in central in location, can give false reading because of partial voluming uh, artifact for those smaller lesions uh, within the uh, renal parenchyma. In this patient, we went ahead and did MRI, and we can see that on T2 weighted images, it's a cystic lesion. There's some internal density on pre-contrast T1, but however, on post-contrast uh, images, as well as on subtraction, there is no enhancement. This is a lesion containing mild hemorrhage. So advantage of MRI in such patients is we don't have to worry about pseudo enhancement. We have subtraction images to uh, subtract out the protein or hemorrhage within the lesion. And we got uh, very sensitive fluid sequences, which can help us diagnosing this cystic indeterminate lesions. This was a indeterminate lesion, as this lesion was uh, kind of uh, bilobed or trilobed. And we can see following administration of IV contrast, you can see some septations within it. Is there some nodularity within it? So this was at least 2F lesion by Bosnia classification. On MRI, we can see this portion of the cyst has got uh, dense hemorrhage. The other portion of the cyst did not have any hemorrhage and is an enhancing nodule, which was uh, uh, diagnostic of early cystic uh, renal cell carcinoma uh, in, this, uh, in this patient. So MR is sensitive for detection of enhancing nodules in cystic renal lesions. It upgraded 73% uh, of uh, patients uh, on uh, this study, uh, it had 95% uh, positive predictive value for malignancy with enhancing mural nodules. Scenario number three, uh, how about CT protocol is adequate, lesion is enhancing, but the diagnosis is uncertain. So in this, the lesion is not fully evaluated with CT scan. For example, uh, this patient, which was a fat poor AML, but based on multiple sequences and enhancement pattern and um, diffusion weighted images as well as in and out of phase images, MR uh, can characterize many of these lesions. 
So wrapping up, MRI is indicated in evaluation of indeterminate renal masses on CT and ultrasound and provide additional diagnostic information, which can be helpful in diagnosing and managing these patients. MR imaging is particularly helpful in distinguishing solid from cystic lesions when enhancement of renal masses is questionable, especially for those where net enhancement on CT is between 10 and 20 Hausfeld units. So we can either upgrade or downgrade uh, Bosnac 2F lesions so that these patients don't, do not have to go for, uh, for follow-up examination uh, every six months to one year for uh, two and a half to three years. Diffusion-weighted imaging and dynamic contrast enhanced imaging can provide specific information regarding tumor histology and uh, staging. MR is especially useful for too small to characterize lesions. There are not going to be any lesions which are too small to characterize on MRI. Lesions with low level of enhancement, hemorrhagic lesions, and complex cyst. Thank you.